Hello, my name is Feng Zimi. I'm now working for Bad Dance and uh, currently uh, focus on virtualization related project. Today, I will share my topic KVM Live Upgrade with properly handling of pass-through device. Next, I will introduce it from the four aspects. Uh, with the development of technology, the VM has to be frequently updated and restarted to add security pads and uh, new features. There are two existing live, uh, live update methods to improve the cloud availability. Uh, KVM live pads and uh, virtual machine live uh, migration. However, they both have uh, serious drawbacks. Kernel live pads cannot handle complex changes. For example, change to persistence data structure. Uh, VM live uh, migration cannot handle the pass-through device and uh, it uh, may be in incur unacceptable load delays because uh, live migration need to copy memory from the old QMU to new QMU. In this topic, I will introduce our live upgrade method. Uh, they can properly update the KVM and the QMU without interrupt customer VMs. Uh, they are difficult for VM life upgrade. How to handle the pass through device during the life upgrade and uh, minimize service downtime is a major um, concern of cloud providers. In this talk, we will analyze the requirements for the pass through device uh, hardware and uh, present how we following we how we how we follow those requirements to uh, properly handle pass through device in our kvm life upgrade uh, implementation in this we also optimize the startup and the suspend of vm to decrease the downtime during the life upgrade uh, this is the framework for life uh, uh, upgrade. In order to uh, life upgrade uh, KVM, we modify KVM module and uh, allow it to be complied uh, multiple modules named by KVM1 model, uh, KVM2 model, and so on. The specific uh, implement implementation is that uh, we move both most of KVM module function into KVM inter module. To load multiple uh, copies of uh, KVM inter modules, we associate uh, all, the ori all, all the original global uh, uh, variables, uh, variables in, the, in KVM model. Uh, with uh, KVM inter model and uh, make all the global function local. Uh, in Linux, a device pass through is enabled by VFIO. During the live upgrade, we inherit uh, the VFIO co connector from the old QMU to the new QMU. And the VM's memory is shared by the new and old QMU process. Uh, the mapping from uh, GPA to HPA is not changed during the life upgrade. Uh, at the IOMMU table, uh, and uh, the IOMMU translation table is remained valid. So, device uh, DMA operation can continue execution without uh, interruption. Uh, even when the VM is stopped. Uh, for pass-through device, how to ensure interrupt is not lost during the life upgrade? Uh, this is difficult because uh, pass-through device is not suspended 
For this reason, the password device interrupts can incur at any time. So we cannot uh, complete uh, copy the uh, password device uh, interrupt from the old QMU to the new QMU during the live upgrade. Uh, there is an existing solution. Uh, inject uh, inject an additional virtual ARQ is a core idea. First, uh, new QMU inherits VFIO event IFDs from the old QMU. Uh, second, the new QMU read, read from uh, event IFD and receive the pending interrupts. Uh, in last, uh, inject an additional virtual ARQ into the VM after handing over the device. Uh, in this topic, we use post-interrupt technology to inject interrupt. Uh, device will set post-interrupt request bit uh, where the device reading an interrupt. So we need only to ensure the same PI descriptor data between the old QMU and the new QMU process. We allow PI descriptor data is shared between the new QMU and the old QMU during the live upgrade. Uh, this picture shows PI descriptor data uh, initialization compared to original uh, KVM design. In order to share PI descriptor data in the new QMU, uh, we, uh, allocate, uh, we allocate memory for, for PI descriptor data structure uh, in the QMU. There are three key points for PI descriptor structure initialization in the new QMU. First, PI descriptor data shouldn't not uh, be initialized, in, in, initialized when the new QMU is initialized. Second, the new QMU don't uh, need to seek post-interrupt requesting data from the old QMU um, because PI descriptor data is shared between uh, the new QMU and uh, the old QMU. Uh, in last, uh, the new QMU don't need to update interrupt mapping table during the live upgrade. Uh, next, I will introduce how to optimize the VM downtime during the live upgrade. This picture shows the live upgrade flow diagram. The first step. We focus a uh, children process and execute the new QMU binary and the new QMU is initialized. The second step, uh, we stop the old QMU and uh, save VM state. The last step, the uh, new QMU load the state from the old QMU and start the new QMU. Uh, it is uh, obvious that uh, VM dot time uh, uh, contains the following phase. Stop the old QMU, uh, save the old QMU state, state uh, load the state from the old QMU and uh, start the new QMU. Uh, when stopping the old QMU, uh, we find clean up, we find clean up in the time D is taking a lot of time uh, when device have multiple queues. Uh, for example, uh, what are you net, what are you block, and so on. The auto QMU process will be killed after the live upgrade. Under, under normal QMU initialization uh, locket, uh, uh, locket. Uh, event IFD will be free by QMU process. However, uh, the device event IFD will be free by uh, by the uh, by the uh, by the system, uh, if the QMU don't uh, free it, so device event have the needn't to clean up by the auto QMU process when the uh, live upgrade is uh, uh, successful.
other normal VM startup logic, uh, first uh, event have the is initialized with the device startup, then uh, vCPU is uh, resumed. Uh, so the VM dot time content contains uh, uh, the initialization of device event have the uh, in this way. Uh, in, inspired by the op optimization of VM suspend, uh, we can pre-create the device event type D during the QMU initialization because the VM dot time don't contest the new QMU initialization. Uh, we can decrease uh, the startup time in this way. In last, uh, we we use we use the shared memory to save uh, the old cumul state and uh, loading state in the new cumul happens concurrently with saving state in the old cumul. Uh, we use the different uh, VCPU number and uh, memory size to measure the VCPU downtime uh, with a development with a different uh, workload. Uh, we use the different uh, benchmark tools to uh, simulate uh, the uh, common use case of the cloud service, uh, including uh, computation, uh, storage, and uh, memory. We use the following tools, uh, Stress, uh, Memory Tester, and uh, FIO to simulate uh, uh, computation memory and uh, and uh, storage. Uh, this picture shows the distribution of vCPU downtime under the VMI uh, idle. Um, we can see the distribution of VM downtime is 11 milliseconds to 34 milliseconds. Uh, next, uh, we use the strings uh, tools to uh, simulate the uh, competition workload. Uh, while running the strings tools in VM, uh, we update the VM in host. Uh, and uh, we can see the distribution of VM dot time is 12, 12 milliseconds to 34 milliseconds. For the memory tester, uh, we use the memory. Uh, we use we use the uh, memory memory tester tools. Uh, we use the uh, we use four GB memory in VM, and uh, we upward the uh, we all we and uh, we upward the. Uh, uh, distribution of uh, VM downtime is uh, 12 milliseconds to 34 milliseconds. Uh, in last, uh, we use the FIO tools to simulate the storage workload. Uh, we read write uh, 14 GB to disk. Uh, we observe the distribution of uh, VM downtime is uh, 12. Uh, uh, millisecond to 38 uh, millisecond. Uh, based on the above test result, uh, we find that uh, the relationship between the VCPU downtime and the uh, VM workload uh, were not closed. Okay, uh, that's all. Uh, thank you for your listening my topic. If you any question for this topic, uh, Please contact me by this email. Thank you.